this made me think in general about what might be at the heart of what's going on with academics. I was thinking to myself, why is this guy always barking and shouting and so loud and aggressive and so quick to anger and go from zero to 100 at the slightest hint of disrespect? And it made me think, this might be all because of what happened when Joe Budden had his little Pasa Pasa with the Migos RIP to take off during that time, I think at the BET Awards, right? That famous video, I'm sure most of you are aware, where he says, yeah, look, okay, let's done then. And like, yeah, let's go. And they all stand up in unison and start unbuckling their blouses and whatnot. And then academics is there like terrified, like, you know, fiddling around with a microphone and looking really scary. Then there's another occasion, a public one, where he is, or maybe there's three. The, the other one I'm thinking of is when Vic Mensa suddenly, it finally goes to um, uh, do the show. I think it's called Everyday Struggle with Joe Biden. I think that's an Everyday Struggle. And I guess academics must have said some stuff about Vic Mensa in the past, or Vic Mensa didn't like his Warren Chirac stuff, whatever happened. But Vic Mensa essentially put him, you know, put him on the spot and kind of pressed him and said, yeah, you know, I would do such and such to you or something. I forgot what he said specifically, but it might be something about slapping someone. But essentially, academics didn't bark the way he does on the internet when Vic Mensa approached him in person. And then the third kind of, you know, a bit of a wild card addition might be the entire tenure that he had with Joe Budden on Everyday Struggle where Joe Budden spent most of his time just shouting at him and essentially kind of bullying him on the show and calling him out and you know basically insinuating that he's dumb he doesn't get anything so I think all those public occasions where he was kind of disrespecting and he didn't react in the right way they've kind of really they're sitting on his consciousness and he can't get rid of it this feeling that everyone thinks he's a pussy so that's why maybe he's overcompensating and shouting so hard and going so aggressive on the internet because he wants to get his get back but that made me think oddly enough about this thing that i had one time which made basically made me go and start doing martial arts and be a position where i'm like waiting for someone to try something so i could get my get back one time in school i had like this the most embarrassing story ever i think i might have been in like year 11 or year 10 or something so it wasn't even like i was in year seven it was like really old and i guess i had my first proper fight with like a guy in a school before i had maybe some skirmishes with people you can beat up you know some scrawny white boy you know he can tump or some asian dude or something but i had like an actual fight with a fellow black guy right and he was of size you know we were both athletic at the time we could both punch both hit so it was going to be like an actual scrap an actual scrap sorry where, you know, it could go badly. It could end badly for either or one of us. And I think we had the scrap because of some football thing. I think it was, you know, some beef about football. I, would, I always had beef around football because I'd always never get picked or stuff. And I always felt like I should be getting picked. And that's where all my struggles with football came from, right? Because I always thought I was flipping Figo in my head. But I guess the managers and the coaches didn't really agree. So something about football happened. I don't know what exactly the issue was. But me and this guy in my year get into an argument. And again, we're in the same school, same year. Somehow we get into some argument. And it's like, yeah, all right, cool. Let's fight after the game. Yeah, 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 fight after the game. And if, if you guys are from East, you know where Wonsted Flats is. And we went there. And I think I was playing football there. And we started to fight in the car park of Wonsted Flats, which is basically this area that, you know, it's got all these pitches around there. And it's like a little place where you can go and change, like a toilet. And it's got like a car park where people um, come in and whatnot. And we decided to go and fight there. I'm sure there's been plenty of fights over the years. And then we're fighting. We decided to start fighting. And it's kind of all gravelly on the floor. And we're fighting. We're all swinging. Like, you know, that kind of tense, like... <laughs> You're just really tense and you're tight and your your heart is beating and you're just kind of swinging all adrenaline. We're swinging and missing, swinging and missing, swinging and missing. And then I guess he goes to swing. And because it's really gravelly, the floor, he slips. And my eyes light up. I'm like, oh my God, he slips my chance. I go to go and punch him. But obviously him being a good fighter, he's able to duck my punch as I'm going to punch him. He's on the floor. And I think I hit him maybe once, but he somehow finds a way to slip my punch as he's falling backwards. I'm leaning all my weight into the punch. He slips backwards, stands up, and then somehow ends up behind me. <laughs> and all I remember seeing was like flashes, like dip, 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 dip. I'm getting beat in the back of my head and I'm trying to get up. And I'm just, and I know by that time I'm losing that because he's got six punches in like unanswered and I'm just trying to protect my head. Then as I get up and as I square back up again to fight again, I see him and he's just like got that, you know, when you're fighting somebody and you know you've won. He's got that confident shrug now. His shoulders are nice and loose. He's bouncing up and down. He's looking at me. He's looking, he's looking at me. He's making me flinch. He's doing all that. And then for some reason, I don't know what came over me. I just ran. <laughs> I just started running. 
I just started running and I remember hearing my friends, Agostino, Agostino, where you going? Where you going? Come on, come on. And the guy starts running and more embarrassing, he runs after me for a little bit and I'm running for my life now because now he's running after me. But then he just stops and it's like, yeah, he's got that kind of, he's got that licking. And then, and then this must have happened like on like a Tuesday and then school the next day on a Wednesday. So embarrassing going to school the next day. Everyone's looking at you like you're a pussy. And then it's what you basically are because you ran away. And then I, I'm in school and then everyone looking at a pussy and I'm wanting to fight everyone and staring at me and I'm just really angry and pissed off. And I really don't know why I even ran because maybe at the time, I guess I was just scared. I thought I was going to get beaten up, whatever it may be, crazy stuff. So I ended up running away. And at that time, it's like year 10, year 11. So I must have been like 14, 15. And it was really embarrassing. I kind of hated it and it kind of made school a bit tough that year, right? <laughs> but I remember that sitting with me for a long time. Like it sat with me for years to the point where I was doing a bit of Muay Thai. Um, obviously, I did a bit of judo for a little bit. I did fencing. I did loads of combat type sport things just to put me in a position where I felt like, okay, if this ever transpired again, I'm going to go to 100. And even to this day, I'm a really well-mannered, chill type of dude. I don't really you know, I'm not quick to anger in any type of way, but I have been known to get into crazy scuffles and arguments in the weirdest places, like, you know, in the flipping queue in flipping Tesco Express, I'm barking and just, you know, threatening to throw some guy through a window because he decided to bump me in a queue or something or whatever it may be. Like I, I get to that level. And I think most of that has come from me thinking, okay, I don't ever want to be in a position where I feel scared or I feel threatened or i feel worried for my life where i'm gonna run away again i'm never gonna do that i'm gonna die on my sword right here right now i'm gonna die over this flipping tesco express queue and you know your mom's gonna cry my mom's gonna cry <laughs> it's gonna be a situation and i think that's what's going on with academics i think it's the same thing i think since that migos thing since the whole vic mensa thing he just hasn't been able to sleep well at night since those occasions and he knows how people look at him especially with him being a fat you know, and him being opinionated because of Chattanooga and being kind of lame and whatever it may be, there's all these little hurdles he has to jump over. And then he's got that other thing as well, the kind of, the, you know, people looking at him like he's a pussy. So he kind of wants to try to reclaim it and kind of remind people that he's not. But unfortunately for him, the only way for him to reclaim his honour is for him to just step to somebody and beat the brakes off them any skirmish he gets into he has to get to a point where he decides okay i'm going to go in jump in my flipping lamborghini urus and i'm going to drive to you and i'm going to beat the brakes off of you that's what he has to do and hopefully film it so people see evidence of it that's what you have to do there's no other way to get it back because at this point he's just barking into his camera on live stream and it looks extra extra lame because you're really aggressive on the camera but no one's ever seen you this aggressive in person we've seen you on two occasions where you know you were pressed and you're put in a position where you had to kind of maybe show your toughness and you didn't show it so now barking in camera and kind of you know arguing with gay guys arguing with fashion dudes and actors arguing with women it just looks weird it just or arguing with every rapper that kind of insults you it just looks really strange so i think unfortunately for academics the only way he can get his get back the only way he can fix this is if he picks a victim, whoever it may be, you know, sometimes if you're in a fight or you're getting rushed, sometimes if you're getting rushed by boys um, or, or by whatever ops, the best thing to do is to grab the biggest one and just start tumping him in. So even if you do get punched up, at least you send a message and one person goes home with a bloody eye or a fucked up face. You have to do that. So I think in this case, he just has to get somebody and just absolutely de demolish them. It's really <laughs> terrible to say this, but I think that's the only way he's going to sleep well at night because I know how hard it was for me to sleep well at night knowing that I ran away from a fight when I was like 15 years old and since then I've been on pure you know aggression from then on if anybody's testing me wrong I'm just gonna go all the way to the end and I think kind of academics need to realize that that's what he needs to do going forward but you know maybe he'll realize it maybe he won't